here's a fascinating fact. Well, you'll be the judge of that, right? Uh, we are. You know how humans sort of. We, you know how we like to think of ourselves as being quite special, right? Turns out, turns out that we share 98 percent of our DNA with chimpanzees. 98 percent of our DNA is the same as chimpanzees. The more you think about that, the more it makes sense, doesn't it? Because we've got quite a lot in common, really, haven't we? You know, uh, for example, when we get in a hot bath, we both go, <laughs> you know, is that? Uh, we both look funny in the back of a spoon, you know. Uh, it's all these things. But it turns out, it's, all that's happened is just one or two little things that we've evolved that have, have, have kind of boosted us along. Right? First of these is language, an amazing thing, language. Right? Anthropologists will tell you that we develop language to help us hunt, right? to help us hunt in packs and communicate. I don't really buy that. I think language is more likely to develop spontaneously, probably between a cave couple who were just furious with each other, you know, incandescent with rage and entirely incapable of expressing their emotions, just standing opposite each other in the cave, going vroom, 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 until something had to give. And one of them finally snapped and went, you twat! Oh, it's all coming out now, isn't it? <laughs> you never clean this cave up. This place is a tip. Well, why didn't you say something before? Well, I couldn't, could I? We've, we've kind of, we invent languages where we see a need for them. You know, like we've tried to invent various universal languages that the whole world could be taught to speak. There is one. It's English. I don't see the problem. But, uh, you know, Esperanto, right? And Esperanto is an amazing language, extraordinary language. But the problem with Esperanto is that for every one person who speaks Esperanto, no one else does. And that, that's the fundamental flaw in the system. There, really. Everything that we do, we sort of, you know, we think that we're terribly sophisticated, but really it's all just, it all just comes back to animal stuff. That's all we do. Territorialism, classic example of this, right? All animals are territorial, we just mark our territory in different ways. So, for example, uh, cats mark their territory uh, by pissing all over it, which seems to be cutting off your nose to spite your face. <laughs> so, like, all this is mine! And I'm not sure that I want it now. To be absolutely honest with you. <laughs> it smells of piss. <laughs> Why did I not just paint a sign? That's cats. We mark our territory in different ways, right? We mark our territory through home improvement, right? Home improvement is not sophisticated, it's just territorialism. It's what you do. That's why the first thing you do when you move into a new house is you take the idiot's wallpaper down and you put yours up, right? Now, here's a little tip if you want to be extraterritorial next time you do this, right? Take the idiot's wallpaper down, go to Mitre 10, right, Bunnings, or an independent home improvement retailer of your choice, right? <laughs> Buy a tin of blood red paint and write on the wall with the paint, I will kill again, right? <laughs> Wait for it to dry and then put your wallpaper up. Yes, now you never actually get to see the punt sign of that little practical joke, but you do get a lovely warm feeling in about five years' time when you hand the keys over. That is, <laughs> that is a nice moment. Enjoy the festival, Melbourne. You'll get home soon. Right. <laughs>